Hello and welcome to the second part of the platforming tools. So in this stage, we are going to look at how we can, for example, instance models for the sides and also the corners. So let's start by making a system that calculates a, for example, like a border here on the side, on each edge. So let's look at how we can extract that information. So we're going to go all the back way at the top here of this loop, where we had our normal shape. And uh, maybe just dis disable the EV here. And we want to do a certain process. What can be good ideas, for example, to use subnetworks? So we can, for example, here just place a subnetwork. So this is like an empty node. And this can then be, for example, this is then calculating uh, the border frame or something like that. So border frame. So we can just now go in the subnetwork and we can, and just we have now the room here to like make something a little bit bigger. Uh, otherwise i have to like make my loop bigger and make this the whole thing bigger so we can like focus some of the logic a bit more here so let's start by making the border one of the first things that i might want to do is just to extract the single line of the border uh, and just to be sure that we only like have that uh, border i want to do a grouping node and in here we're gonna just check uh, on the edges so we're gonna make uh, edge group and we want to say to get like the unshared edges so this will extract the border so in case there would be like any connections here or any topology here we're now only getting that border uh, we can give this a better name but for now it doesn't matter that much and the next step would be then actually extracting this uh, to a single curve so this node will extract the edge group to just a curve shape so here we can just go uh, and now we have actually curves so currently we're only working with curves and not necessarily like full polygons. Then it's also a good step to do sort of like a certain cleanup process. Uh, in this case, since I have like quite basic geometry, you could say that it's not necessary, but in some cases uh, it might be necessary to do some certain cleanup. So what can we, for example, do is we can just do a resample to have like a higher uh, poly count. So you can see that it will add a lot of points. In the resample, we probably want to enable here resample by polygon edge. Otherwise, it will uh, break up here this uh, corner, for example. We can maybe put this a bit higher. So we're just adding this extra geometry. Uh, we can also do like a small partial delete. So if there would be like small geometry parts, we can delete them. So we probably want to set this to then the parameter mode and maybe increase this a bit. Um, point three for example then we this is some basic cleanup and we can do like the face it node and we can then basically here say to remove inline points so just to clean up all the points that we just created so this will make sure that if there would be any weird points it will, they will also be deleted we can also then convert our lines into single polygons so you will see that we will now go uh, instead of like, this is like one single polygon and now we're actually having each line between the points now in an, an individual polygon. Uh, we can also do like splitting of them, uh, which will be needed. So split points. But for example, try to extract here this part. You can see that this is now uh, being split. So they're not attached to the whole shape. And now we want to actually prepare our curves to then calculate how many of my border props can I be placing. So let's say like I have a box, for example, and this box is one by one unit. So every time uh, there is one unit, I want to like place a point so we know how many boxes we should have. Uh, so we can do that by doing the resample. And with this resample, we actually want to use this as the size so in case, like I said, like if your certain model is like one unit or five units, you're going to fill that value in here. Um, you can also like give this a clear naming, like set, um, set size. So we know that this is to set the size. So you can clearly see the points now being located in those areas. Then we want to do another uh, convert node. So convert uh, lines. So again, this is being used to break up the shape again into multiple primitives. So now we have like each part here is now a primitive. So we want to extract it. So each primitive here is actually then representing a model or a border. 
And again, we want to then also do a split on that. So we can do split points. We can also, for example, use uh, here split primitives because these are different primitives. So we can say split them. Uh, and we need to disable here uh, by attribute. So it will just split uh, those uh, parts here. So now they are split and we can use, for example, the primitive property node. And we can, for example, now uh, play around with the scale. So we can here enable the transform option. And if I now would grab the scale and lower this, we can see that we can now extract those parts here individually. Now an important step here is also to know how long each primitive was. And luckily for us, if we go back to our uh, convert lines node, it actually compute a length. So if we go to our attributes and we check some of the information here, so this is of course stored in primitive, we can see that we have a length value. So you can see that we use the size here of five, but of course they're not constantly be able to hit that five number. So sometimes, for example, here, there is not enough space to uh, have a full length of five. So we're gonna use this value to scale our model. So if the model is not five, we're gonna scale the model down. So that's quite important to have that value. Now, since we want to represent everything by instances, we need to promote this value to our points because the primitives will be removed. So we're gonna go with an attribute promotion. And we're gonna place this over here. And we want to say that we want to promote a something from primitive to points. And we're gonna go here and say that we want to promote the rest link to the points. So now we have that here in the points. So now we can, without worrying about the values, just scale this down to zero. And this is now a point cloud. So each each point now will represent, uh, for example, the border or a fence. One more last thing to do here is to actually fuse this because we are actually scaling down, as you see, like the whole primitive into like a point, but they're actually just overlapping. So we need to fuse the points. And all the way down here, we also need to untoggle this to make sure they are not removed. So you can see that there are now 20 points and here there were 40. Now the last step here to finish this up is to actually define a certain vector on how do I need to rotate my object. So if I, if I would now copy my object, I don't know how they should be orientated. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna do an extrusion of my shape. So here extrude. And I want to now actually use uh, using here this transform option. We want to set this to global and we're going to grab our handle and just move this up. And I want to also here disable here the front group. So I want to use this, for example, this primitive to transfer this direction uh, onto the points. And to do that, I probably also want to add some more topology here. So let's also include a resampling here. So you'll see that this will just create more topology. doesn't need to be that high. This can be, for example, maybe you can 0.3, maybe even higher. Uh, we can also add some more topology over here. If you go to divisions, we can add some more values there. And then we want to calculate the normals. And specifically, we want to switch this to point normals. So we can view here the point normals. So you can see that each point is facing in, in certain directions. So in the corner, they are facing like, uh, other directions and again you, you can do for example like a splitting node here again like if you do the split step here uh, you will get rid of that but let's see and how well this already works so we want to transfer the data so we're going to say transfer attributes and we want to specifically say to only actually target the normals and as you can see now they are like having the right uh, rotations here and we are almost done with this network uh, the last thing that we want to do is actually set the scale. So let's take a step back here and, for example, now uh, copy my box on the points. So copy two points. So this is like to check what's going on. So you can see that that works fine. Uh, maybe scale my box here in the right axis here to value five. So I think here value five. And now we have those boxes. So we can see that we are still uh, having issues and that is with the scaling. So we have the correct or rotation, but now we want to like set the scale. So we're going to bring in a wrangle node here and we're going to just type in one line of code. And we're going to all this set scale. So we know that 
we are doing scaling stuff here. So we want to speak directly to the scaling properties and we're going to say add scale value. This needs to be equal or this needs to be set to certain values. So we're going to say set the scale value. And we want to say that our scaling value, uh, for example, is the rest length. So we've used this before. Then we can also just say that it's one in the height and one in the width. Then we can close this off. Uh, so very important here is to actually type this right. So I just mistyped it. What you can also do here is to actually rename uh, this. So when you promote the attribute, you can just simply say, uh, rename this to, for example, uh, the width of an object. So we can now just, instead of the, so we can now just use width instead of rest length. Uh, so I can just copy paste this. And now we have those values. Like I'm also now scaling this by five. Uh, so this doesn't need to be one. Uh, so this can be back to one. And you can see that they are now properly aligning. So you can still play around a bit with the scaling values here. Like I'm, I can just say divide by two. I can do multiply. If the height value needs to be different, I can say multiply the height. So we can play around here with the scale. So even though you have like a different model with like a different size, we can then tweak the scaling values. Uh, to make sure that it's like fitting a bit better in the setup. So that is done. So here we are done with our setup. So we did some cleanup, we calculated the positions of them and we transferred also the, the normals to have the right uh, rotations. So that's basically here uh, what we are doing in this network. So this output here is ready to be used in an instancing step. So that's why for now we may be just gonna here grab those boxes uh, and copy paste that. So for now, let's just keep it with that. Another part of the tutorial is finding here the corners. So we can see that we don't have actually like nice corner pieces or parts. And I also want to then specifically locate corner data and then copy a sort of like a tube shape on this. So this is like a quick way of getting some nicer looking corners. And again, I want to do a sub network to maybe make things a bit more cleaner. And we're going to just say, uh, get corners. And we're also going to use the data from here. And we're going to go in there. And let's make some room. And the first step that I want to do is, I actually also want to do an extrusion here. So we want to do an extrude. And we just want to extrude this a little bit. It doesn't have to be precise, uh, just like a little bit. And we also want to remove then uh, the front group. So we only have like the, the side borders like we had that previously. Then we want to calculate the normals. We can calculate here the point normals. So you can see that they will specifically, uh, and so in this case, they will all, so in this case, they will always be, be like 45 degrees because we have like 90 degree corners. And the next step is then also uh, measuring the shape. So we're gonna bring in a measuring node. And with this measure, so by default, they will measure how large, for example, the primitives are. So you can see that the larger primitives are red, the smaller primitives are more going through that blue color. What we want to do with this measuring is actually measure the curvature because I want to know if a corner is actually going outwards or inwards. So either convex or concave. So we want to say that our type is a point. We want to measure it on the points. And we want to now say measure uh, curvature options. And you can already see now that we have like, again, those red and those blue values that you know more in data about. I'm also going to here switch the measuring option to a uh, mean. So that will change a bit. And what I also want to do here is we can now check our attributes. So we can see that we have some attributes here uh, containing the curvature data. And now I want to transfer this data back to my original shape. Um, so we can do an attribute transfer. You can also for example, use some of the group data here to delete, for example, the edges back again. Um, I can now just, for example, do the transferring part. So attribute transfer. So we want to transfer the normals and the curvature. When that is done, I also want to then uh, split the results. And we actually don't need like the primitives and lines anymore. So we can also do, for example, like an add node and we can just say only keep the points. So now we just have like purely points in our scene. 
So in this split node, what we can say, if you look at our curvature value, if it's, for example, higher or lower than zero, that means that it will make the difference between an inward or an outward. So we're going to say here, add curvature. Uh, if it's bigger than zero. So by default, it might not work. And then we also have to switch these two points. And now we will see the difference between the outer points and the inner points. So that's like a quick way of getting that difference there. It might happen that you can have conflicting data and I build in also like a clean uh, step here. So we're going to say to first of all and toggle these two and then here remove all attributes except for the normal and of course except for the curvature data so that can help in case there is some conflicting data and then we're going to have two outputs so here uh, we have for example the the outer corners and then we can say that these are then for example the inward corners i'm going to switch this to one so we have two outputs here. And for now, uh, for temporary viewing this, I'm just basically going to copy this and maybe we're going to use a tube shape. So let's use a tube. And we want to close the tube. And let's merge these together. So merge nodes. And you can see that this is exactly what I want, sort of like a nice rounding effect here. So of course, these are just like template models, uh, but in Unreal, of course, we're going to use the real model. Uh, but that's the, the idea here is to then have a nice, nice border. So I can now plug this in with my other shapes here. So we can just merge this together. So these two, uh, like so. So we have a shape like that. And I can always now go back to my input shape. And I can start playing around with that. And you can see that we will create these nice borders, but they also like a smooth corner. That's sort of what I wanted to show you here in this tutorial on how we can make something like that with instancing. Uh, you can just fully unique generate this geometry as well, but this is with instancing. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.